Welcome to our lecture online. Before we give some examples of how to implement this in some realistic uh, example problems, let's summarize the differences between the time domain and the phasor domain. The time domain is an equation that depends on the time, the frequency times the time plus the phase angle. Notice it's the maximum voltage times the cosine or potentially the sine of omega t. In the phasor domain, we have a vector representation which is equal to the magnitude and a phase angle. So the differences, this is in the time domain, it's a time function, it depends on time. Here it's the phasor domain, we can also call it the frequency domain. This represents the instantaneous voltage at some moment in time. So this will take on various values between maximum VM and minimum or negative VM. So from a positive VM to a negative VM, it represents the voltage at any point in time with that function. And when we go to the phasor domain, it represents the magnitude and the phase at t equals zero. So in other words, there's no time dependency here. It simply represents the magnitude and the phase difference at time equals zero when you want to compare different uh, items such as a current and voltage or the voltage across different items in your circuit. So here we can say that definitely there's a time dependency here. Here it's completed time independent. Time has no function there. It's just simply a snapshot in time and that is it. Also realize that this is always going to be a real voltage. It's the projection onto the real axis, the voltage axis. So you always get a real voltage out of this equation. And this representation gives you both the real and imaginary parts. I guess I should close the parentheses here. And so if you want to then draw the real part out of it, you can do that. If you want to draw the imaginary part of it, you can do that. The real part is the horizontal axis. The imaginary part is the vertical axis. And then here, if you're going to use the phasor diagram, you want to make sure that the signals that you put on the same diagram all have the same frequency Otherwise, it doesn't make a lot of sense. If the rotation of the phaser goes around faster for one than the other, then there's going to be a varying phase difference between them, and you can't have that. You want to make sure that the phase differences between the various phasers that you put on the phase diagram always will remain constant, so that as they rotate around, they will keep a perfect phasor difference between the different signals or the different uh, phases that you want put on the phase diagram. So here you don't care about that. You can have different frequencies, but there the frequencies must be the same. So that's a nice little summary. Now let's go ahead and use them in some real examples. And you'll find out that this format of the representation of the voltages and the currents in the circuit can be really, really helpful when you start adding, and subtract, and multiply, dividing. So stay tuned and You'll take a look at those examples and you'll say, yes, that's a good method to do the problems. And there'll be plenty of examples for you coming up in this playlist.